Hey guys, in this tutorial I will show you how to do 3D motion tracking like in this video. So basically I will tell you how to do the motion tracking but I won't show you how to color correct it and how to add these particles in camera shake because I already made tutorials for that. So just go on my channel and check these out. I will also put the links in the description and I also had made a tutorial for the zoom in and out. Um, yeah, the focus effect, that's also a nice effect you can add to the final uh, cinematic. So, yeah, basically this is our cinematic. I will put uh, put this in the description so that you can use the same one if you don't have an HGPV or something. So, yeah. Um, basically, when you have your uh, cinematic, make sure that you're in everything you're working on. Like, we will use um, Buju 4.1 in this tutorial. You can do this in f uh, 5. 5. Two, but I just have 4.1 and we will use uh, Cinema 4D so yeah be sure that in all programs you always have the same frame rates that's the most important thing so go to composition settings and change your frame rate to 30 and click OK not 29.9730 30. and then uh, render out your composition as a PNG sequence uh, yes cinematic so go to composition, add to render queue, change this one to uh, PNG sequence. Where is it? Oh my god, I'm blind. There it is. Click OK, go to this one and sh make sure that the frame rate is 30 again. And click OK and then when you save it, you should make a create a new folder and save that into there because um, After Effects or if you do this in Sony Vegas you can do this in Vegas too um, yeah After Effects in Vegas will, cr will create uh, one picture for each frame and yeah I already rendered this out yeah this is the folder with all these pictures so yeah when you did that open up Buju and click on import sequence then select the search for the folder you saved your uh, uh, PNG sequence. Click on the very first picture, click open. And if you have Buju 5, you have to change your frame rate in this window, I think. Um, so change it to 30 there. Uh, but in uh, yeah, Buju 4.1, you don't do this in this video. So click apply. Uh, if this comes up, Buju has detected an alpha channel in the sequence, just click no and click close. Then uh, go to edit camera and on the frame rate make sure that it's 30 frames per second. Click apply and close. So now we um, will do the motion tracking. So go to the track features tool, tool and uh, you can go to advanced and drag this up if you want more points but I will just leave it here for this tutorial. Click start and yeah let this load. I will just pause the video and come back when it's Okay, that's done now. Um, so now we have all these yellow and red dots and lines. So um, we don't need that. Uh, that's just the first tracking. So now we, you go to camera solve and uh, check optimize camera path smoothness and then hit start again. So I will pause this again and come back when that's done. This should take a bit longer than the first one. So yeah, see you. Okay, that's done now. Um, now you will have these points. By the way, uh, you can move in your timeline when you click on this and drag your mouse. So now you will have all these track points. Um, so now go to the middle of your uh, cinematic. Um, and then go to... Yeah, basically there are different ways to export your uh, points and motion track stuff to uh, Cinema 4D and After Effects. I will just show you one way and maybe I will make another tutorial uh, on the other ways you can do. Um, so basically, yeah, this is a complicated part, but um, yeah, if you did it once, you will, it will be easy. So yeah, um, go to Scene Geometry and click uh, Add Coordinate from Hint. So basically, what we do now is tell Buju um, what the like the axis in the three D room. Um, so basically this like uh, this is the z-axis or z-axis whatever you want to call it 
Um, so it's basically the 3D layout. Like, uh, if you would walk from here to there. So, hold on, I'm back in a minute. Okay, sorry for that. So basically, this is the line you would walk. Um, and yeah, so go to your type and change that to the uh, z axis. And let's just use. Yeah, now you have to select the points uh, that uh, represent the z axis. So I'll just choose this point and then control, click and hold control and click on the second point. Then click connect to select it. And now we will add another axis. So go to add coordinate from int. And this time we will uh, tell Buju where the y axis is. That's basically this line, like the wall. So I think I will yeah, use this point and this point. So click connect to select it and uh, again now we will tell Buju what the x axis is. So x axis is basically this line. I think I will use mm, this point and and mm, this point. Click connect to select it and now the last thing we're going to show Buju is the origin that's just a point in the middle, maybe this one, and click connect to select it. After you're, you're done with this, you cl uh, click update coordinate frame and click close. So now we will export our camera solve. So we'll go to export, export camera solve, and make sure that your export type is uh, Cinema 4D dot c4d and you can uh, change your output um, and the most important thing I always did that wrong is gay scene by and change that to 100 otherwise it will won't work so then click on save and now we will use uh, yeah do the cinema 4d part let me just stop cinema 4d and I can already yeah okay then go to file open and select your the project you just saved from Buju click open and uh, on scale you change it to 100 uh, uh, 10 not 100 10 1 0 click OK drag this out so that you can see the full timeline and yeah, that's this looks okay so now um, double click here to create a new material double click on that and click on texture on the color tab you go to texture load image go to your folder uh, with your png sequence select the very first picture again the first frame click open then when this comes up click no then click on this uh, like location whatever and go to your animation tab here and then click on calculate because otherwise um, it will just be a picture and not the full um, video then you can close that hold your mouse on your uh, on this thing on the light thing and go to background then you drag that material onto your background and you will have yeah this yeah this looks quite okay and yeah now we will add our text go to more graph text object maybe type in mm, small because I don't want big text I know uh, so then you sometimes it the size of your text is okay and sometimes it's really small so change that you go to your height and drag that up and yeah maybe 2800 and change the depth to yes to it's okay for you then go to your font and you can change it to whatever you want um, I think for this tutorial just use Arial black and then go to your caps just to make it look better and add to the start fillet cap to the end fillet cap and drag this up so you can see it 
Mm, yeah, maybe 85 and 85. So then um, on your text you can go to object and on the line you can change it to middle. So that's it's at the middle of this plane. Go forward and let's actually make this a bit smaller. So change that to 2500 and this to 700. <coughs> so now um, we will fix the rotation because it's not perfect and change the position a bit. Mm. What the fuck is going on here? Oh, okay. So, uh, yeah, for the material, um, I will. Yeah, I got this from one of Figure's tutorials. Uh, it's actually quite nice material. So go to your content browser, click on this icon here. Oh, let that open, and go to go to your presets, Cinema 4D, Materials, Nanel, and Glossy. So here you can change the color of that. So you can't just change the first color, you have to change the other colors too because this text, uh, yeah, just, let's just say, uh, change this to a dark blue or something, this to, yeah, another dark blue, this to Yeah, no, let's say lighter blue. So that's okay. Um, drag that onto your text. By the way, if you want more tutorials on materials and how to add them to your text and maybe on lightning, then write that in the comments and I will make more cinema for the tutorials. So basically, normally when I light up my uh, light my uh, stuff in cinema for the, I use the grayscale gorilla light kit, but. I don't think everyone has that, so I will just show you something else. So go to the light thing over here and add a sky. Then control, uh, click and drag your background material to the right. Double click on that. On your color tab, you go to the texture, go to copy channel, go to the luminance, tick that, and to its uh, paste channel. <coughs> and then drag that onto your sky so now this looks shit so uh, right click on sky go to cinema for details uh, cinema for details compositing and uncheck scene by camera so let's pre-render this that's this looks quite nice but I don't like the reflection of this so go to our text material go to the reflection at the drag up the blurriness to maybe 30 and the intensity down to 5 yeah, that's fine. Looks much better now. So um, now to um, add shadow to uh, to the ground, you yeah I think I will show that in another video, and I will just in this video I will add the shadow in After Effects because that's what I uh, normally do because it's much faster render time and so on. So now I will show you my render settings. Um, yeah, first of all. Uh, double click on the bottom one the dot of the background or you could just delete the whole background if you want to because we won't need that now anymore so click on the render settings here go to output change the frame range to all frames because otherwise it's just a picture change the save uh, to f the format to quick time movie and uh, that's really important uh, tick alpha channel then go to anti-aliasing, uh, change it to best and animation, and add some ambient occlusion. So go to effect ambient occlusion and then effect global illumination. On global illumination, you go to the GI mode and change it to uh, IR camera animation. Then go to the radiance cage and change that to low and that to low. So then that's basically it just and, uh, one save and now we'll just render this and come back when that's done 
Okay guys, um, it's finished rendering now, so that is our text, looks quite nice, I like the reflections and the lightning, so, um, yeah, now let's open After Effects, go to, uh, yeah, drag our uh, text file into our project, then go to the composition of your um, cinematic here, and drag that on top. So that's basically it. Um, yeah, it fits perfectly, I think. Yeah, a bit too much at the right, I think, but yeah, you could always go back and adjust that. And yeah, if you want to know how to uh, put it behind the, uh, how to make it look like if it's behind the wall, um, you have to mask it for that. Um, yeah, not like that, but yeah, I will make a tutorial for that um, so that you can uh, because I wouldn't that would take too long if I would make it now, but yeah, and if you want to know how to add the camera shake and the color corrections, uh, by the way, you should always add them to adjustment layer because then it will get uh, added on the uh, text layer and, and on the cinematic layer. So let me just see what this would look uh, uh, look like. Yeah, quite nice. Um, so now I will show you the last thing I will show you is how to add the shadows now, so that it looks uh, better. So go to your text layer and uh, and click Control D to uh, duplicate it. Then go to your effects and type in fill drag that on the uh, bottom layer and change the color to black so then go to uh, uh, yeah Gaussian blur drag that on the bottom layer and change the blurriness uh, maybe let's say to 50 or something then uh, uh, by the way, you should go to your top layer also and add some Gaussian Blur, but just put this to 1 so that the edges are not that sharp, or maybe uh, 0.5. Yeah, 0.5 is fine. Then go to your uh, shadow layer and yeah, go uh, make it to a 3D layer. Click F4 if you don't see this menu. Uh, go to and tick this box. And then go to the Y axis and drag this down so then you can, can press T for opacity and uh, drag that down to maybe yeah 45 or something let's preview this by the way you can always change your settings maybe make the shadow darker or maybe more blurred so yeah, yeah if you want to know how to make it behind the building I will put an annotation on the screen when the tutorial is uploaded so yeah but not on all cinematics you will have a building in front of the text so that's not that important yeah the text looks fine it's on the right position the shadows and the reflections our uh, reflections change there looks pretty nice so yeah that's basically the tutorial um, for the camera shake and so on, don't forget to go on my channel and check out the videos or check out the links in the description. So yeah, please like the video and I will also make another video showing how to do the shadows in Cinema 4D and another technique to uh, motion track it in Buju if maybe if this technique doesn't work for you. So yeah, like the video, that would be amazing and wow, 90 minutes. Okay. Bye.